Over the past couple of months, the energy industry has received a fair share of volatility and negative press with the worldwide demand for electricity declining by 5% and the price of oil even going negative briefly, which had never been seen before. Now in 2020, fossil fuels obviously still run the world, but renewable energies in the form of wind, solar, and hydroelectric are becoming more and more sought after by corporations and governments that are looking to lower their carbon footprint and have a positive impact on our planet for the long term. So in today's video, we're going to be covering one key player in the renewable space. Hey, what's going on, savers and investors? I hope you're all having a great day as always. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Griffin. And in today's video, we're going to be diving into the seventh episode of the Q1 earnings analysis series, covering a highly requested company in the renewables energy sector. It is Brookfield Renewable Partners, ticker BEP.UN on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and simply BEP on the New York Stock Exchange. The renewable energy sector has been on my radar for quite some time now because after all, green energy really is the future as more and more consumers and governments are shifting towards sustainable sources for their products and energy. And so for this reason, it's somewhat inevitable that over the next coming decades, renewable energy will really gain some market share in the whole energy space. In Canada, there's a handful of renewable energy stocks to choose from, such as Algonquin Power that we've spoken about before on this channel, Trans Alta Renewables, and and Northland Power, just to name a few. However, the reason why I chose to speak about Brookfield Renewables in this video is first of all, because it was highly requested by the audience, but also because it is part of the Brookfield Asset Management Company, ticker BAM.A, which is an absolute monster of an asset management company. They manage over $500 billion worth of assets worldwide and have multiple different subsidiaries of which Brookfield Renewable is a part of their whole ecosystem. Just take a look at this organizational chart of Brookfield's entire operations and you can clearly see the sheer size of this company with the renewables section right here and Brookfield Asset Management owns 60% of the Brookfield Renewable Partners Company which was founded in 2011 when Brookfield Renewable Power Fund and Brookfield Renewable Power Inc. were merged to create this new company that now exists today under the ticker symbol BEP. With that said, I'll try to cut today's video link down a bit since some of my recent Q1 earnings analysis videos have been in the 20 25 to 30 minute range, which I do believe has some value due to the amount of detail. But nonetheless, it has come to my attention that 30 minutes might be a little bit long. So we'll try to cut this down in today's video and future Q1 earnings analysis videos. But if at any point in time you're enjoying the content and it's providing you value, then please make sure to smash the like button. It really helps the channel grow and subscribe for more content such as this. The way we'll be structuring this video is similar to how we've been doing it in previous Q1 earnings analysis videos. Starting off in this case, however, in the overview of the Q1 letter to shareholders to get us up to speed with the company and their operations. Following that, we'll be diving into the Q1 earnings report, looking over revenues and projections with an analysis of the balance sheet to follow. After that, a quick overview of the cash flow statement and finishing off the video, we'll be speaking about my final thoughts on the company and future outlook as an investment. All right, so first off, taking a look at Brookfield Renewable stock quote on Yahoo Finance, I'm currently filming this video on Monday evening while the market is closed, but you'll You'll probably be watching this on Tuesday the 2nd, so prices and numbers may have changed slightly. Shares of BEP.UN are trading at $65.52 per share, which is down 2.79% as of close in today's trading period. Since March lows, the stock has rebounded tremendously by 49.04%, leaving the stock now at only 13.25% down from February highs of $75.53, which is quite remarkable, but as we'll be uncovering later Later on in the video, this is mostly attributed to strong Q1 revenue figures and investor sentiment towards this company as a solid medium to long term play, in my view. As a result of the current share price, the market cap is sitting at 11.729 billion, making it the largest renewable energy company in Canada. Now, with that said, BEP was not profitable in the 2019 calendar year, and for this reason, the price to earnings ratio is non existent, and the earnings per share over the trailing 12 months is negative. In fact, when looking at the revenues and earnings of BEP since 2016, it's clear that this is a company that is focusing tremendously on growth and reinvestment of cash into their operating activities to further increase the scope of their operations. In addition to this, since inception of the company, they have managed to deliver 17% compounded annual returns to unit holders, combining asset growth and dividend distributions. Surprisingly, even though Brookfield Renewable Partners is not a company that is consistent 
consistently profitable, they have managed to maintain a consistent dividend distribution since inception of the company in 2011 with increased dividend distributions for each calendar year. In fact, on their website, they have stated that they try to maintain a 70% dividend payout ratio in regards to their funds from operations with a target 5-9% to annual growth rate in cash distributions, but as of the last 12 months of earnings, the dividend payout ratio has actually been negative 2,500% and with the projected earnings for this calendar year, we're looking at roughly 381% dividend payout ratio based on their earnings. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Personally, a dividend payout ratio this high is always a red flag to me for maintenance of dividend distributions in regard to maintenance payout ratio. I don't necessarily see this as being a financially wise move, but we'll be rediscussing this later on in the video when looking at the cash flow statement. Even though this is technically an energy company, BEP operates in the renewable sector, which still has a lot of legwork ahead of it, and they're utilizing the entirety of their income to reinvest into growth and expansion, making this an energy growth stock that has provided investors with combined double-digit returns annually. All right, so now that we've taken a look at the stock quote for Brookfield Renewable Partners, let's quickly highlight some important passages from their letter to unit holders, as well as Q1 2020 supplemental information document to give you a bit more context about this company's operations. The CEO starts off by speaking about how BEP is a key player in the renewable energy space, helping the world transition towards renewable energy to reduce CO2 consumption while leveraging their global capabilities to provide shareholders with 12 to 15 percent combined annual returns and growth through all market cycles. Despite the market volatility and difficult financial times we're living through in 2020, Brookfield's operations remain resilient and earnings are expected to be stable, with their financial position being in excellent shape. With that said though, we're going to be determining this for ourselves when diving into the income statement and balance sheet shortly. One of the main reasons why Brookfield Renewable is stating their resiliency even during these difficult times is due to their 600 customer customer base located around the world that are under long-term power purchase agreements. This basically means that a higher percentage of their customers had entered into a long-term contractual agreement to purchase energy from Brookfield, allowing them to maintain steady income levels and be largely immune to economic slowdown as we're currently living through. In fact, even with the worldwide demand for electricity and fossil fuels having slowed down significantly over the past couple of months, demand for Brookfield's renewable energy has stayed largely untouched due to the contractual obligations. Even more, the company strongly believes that the demand for renewable energy will continue to grow over the coming years, perhaps even at a faster pace in the coming decade. Finally, before diving into the income statement and balance sheet, BEP has mentioned their continued focus on company expansion and business growth with the recent merger of their subsidiary Terraform into the Brookfield Renewable Company on an all-stock basis. There is a lot more information that is covered in this letter to unit holders, but a lot of it relates to the numbers that we're about to look at, so let's now jump into the income statement for the first quarter of 2020. This income statement is comparing the three months ended March 31st for 2019 and 2020 with everything expressed in millions of US dollars. Starting off with the revenues for the first quarter of 2020, they were 792 million, down 4% from the 825 million in Q1 of 2019, but is actually up 9.1% since the last quarter of 2019. Direct operating costs have also increased slightly by $7 million, and everything else is honestly somewhat standard, with nothing really catching my eye in this income statement, as the fluctuations for other elements are minor and pretty justifiable. This left Brookfield Renewable with an income figure of $120 million in the first quarter of 2020, which is down 21.6% since same quarter 2019. With that said, this does take into account $200 million worth of depreciation of their assets, and after reading through all these documents, to me, it's somewhat clear that the company's main focus is not to maintain high levels of profitability, but rather to focus on expansion and acquisition of more energy generating assets for long-term growth of revenue. The depreciation figure, which does stay somewhat high for each quarter, allows the company to maintain higher levels of liquidity for growth and contributes to their increasing funds from operations figure. Do remember that this company is somewhat of a fund where they manage energy producing assets and for this reason the funds from operations is an extremely important figure to gauge the company's financial health as we did with the REITs. If you've forgotten what the funds from operations or FFO is, it's the net income of a fund combined with the depreciation and amortization from which gains on sales 
of security is subtracted. In the first quarter of 2020, Brookfield Renewable managed to generate $217 million in funds from operations, which is down 4.4% since same quarter 2019. Now, if we consider that the worldwide demand for electricity has decreased dramatically since the beginning of the year due to slowdown of economic growth and individuals just staying home, this slightly decrease in FFO figure is actually quite phenomenal and is attributed to the long-term contractual obligation of BEPs customers. This is honestly a great position to be in for Brookfield and is one of the reasons that I'm not fully concerned with the company's low net earnings year over year. In fact, of these 600 contractually obligated clients, most of them are public power authorities and utilities, which heavily diversifies BEP's income generation and minimizes risk. Their largest non-government customer only represents 2% of all power generation, which once again provides the company with protection of their future cash flows. Finally, the weighted average remaining contract duration with their existing customers is 14 years with 95% of the portfolio being under contractual obligation as of 2020, which severely hedges the company against short-term economic slowdown or lowered power demands. I'll say it right now, any company that has 95% of their current income generating capacity being under contractual obligation for the next 14 years on average is just phenomenal because think of it, even if BEP doesn't continue to expand their operations and acquire more power generating assets, which by the way they will, they can still guarantee at a minimum a certain level of cash flow for the years to come even during one of the most volatile times in history when other companies like say Air Canada are operating at under 10% capacity. All right, so let's now move on to the balance sheet of Brookfield Renewable Partners to see what their financial position looks like as of the first quarter of 2020. Before looking at the concrete numbers though, let's highlight some of the most relevant points that they've stated in their earnings document relating to liquidity and the balance sheet. The opening statement of the section indicates that their liquidity position remains robust with over $3 billion of total available liquidity and that during the quarter they managed to bolster this liquidity position through financing and capital raising initiatives all while maintaining a low risk balance sheet. We'll be determining that for ourselves though when looking at the balance sheet and cash flow statements. Since BEP operates in the renewable sector, they were also able to benefit from green financing initiatives by raising 200 million USD in green perpetual preferred units in the United States market and 350 million in Canadian dollars through 10 year corporate green bonds at 3.5% interest. All this to say that Brookfield has been raising debt capital and equity capital to maintain their business operations and financing activities. Now diving into the balance sheet, note that this is comparing Q1 2020 to Q4 of 2019 and once again everything is in millions of dollars. Starting with their total current asset, their balance sheet actually does not provide this figure for the assets and liabilities on a short term basis so we'll be looking at them in Yahoo Finance and I checked them all and numbers match up. Their current assets are 1.564 billion which is up 6.1% percent since Q4 of 2019 from 1.474 billion. Now 294 million of these current assets in Q1 2020 are in cash and cash equivalent which has also more than doubled since last quarter demonstrating the company's focus on increasing liquidity. BEP has also purchased some short-term investments for 126 million bringing their total cash position to 420 million. In contrast to their total current assets, Brookfield Renewables total current liability sit at 1.589 billion which puts their current ratio dividing current assets by current liabilities at 0.98. If you've watched any of my previous company analysis videos then you would know that this figure is not necessarily ideal with a target of above 2 for what I would consider a financially healthy company. This figure basically means that if BEP needed to pay off their current debt, payables and other current liabilities they would not even be able to cover this amount one single time without having to raise more capital, bringing up their long-term debt levels, selling more shares, or selling off some of their assets. Bottom line, this isn't really something that I'm personally comfortable with, especially
likely since their dividend payouts are quite high, but we'll speak about that again when looking at the cash flow statement. Do I believe that the company will be in trouble on a short-term basis from a liquidity perspective? No, I don't considering their guaranteed revenues, but I still would prefer to see the company pay down some of that current debt and accrued liabilities instead of maintaining a high dividend payout when this is a company that is in full growth and expansion mode, but that's really just my opinion. Finally, the company's total assets are 36.663 billion with 27.873 billion in net property and equipment, which is to be expected considering their business model of managing energy generating assets. Total liabilities are 16.306 billion, representing only 49.9% of total assets. So even though the company's overall balance sheet is relatively strong, their short-term balance sheet could be improved in my opinion. And last but not least, before speaking about my final thoughts on the company, let's quickly look at the cash flow statement of BEP to see how funds are flowing in and out of the company. And if you're enjoying this video up to now, then please take a second to smash a like button. It really helps my channel out. Operating activities for Q1 2020 were 355 million, which is highly impacted by the depreciation figure of 206 million. But this is somewhat to be expected for a company with this much physical property in order to maintain liquidity levels. In fact, when looking at their depreciation over the past calendar years, BEP depreciates their assets by hundreds of millions of dollars per year. Everything else from the operating activities section is pretty standard. Moving on to the financing activities section, this is where I find things a little strange regarding how they have chosen to allocate funds. BEP has raised $195 million through issuing shares, which they do a fair bit of when looking at past years common stock issued. The reason why I find this odd though is because the company maintains a high and increasing dividend year over year, contributing to billions of dollars in financing losses, but consistently distributes shares and raises debt. I fully understand their motives for issuing debt and raising funds through stock issuances for further growth and expansion, while the renewable energy sector is still just taking off for future growing demand, but other than maintaining their target shareholder return year over year, I don't see why the company would maintain a dividend in the 5% yield range considering that they're losing billions per year through this dividend distribution. I would sooner like to see the company focus on reducing their short-term debt levels to get their current ratio at a favorable level and either increase their cash position or continue purchasing income generating assets instead of focusing on increasing dividends. All things considered, with their debt repayment considered, the financing cash flows for Q1 2020 were negative $131 million. The only reason why their free cash flow figure is $302 million for Q1 2020 is due to the depreciation of their assets and actually when comparing their dividend payments of $200 million to their funds from operation of $217 million, this puts their dividend to FFO payout ratio at 92.27%, which is much higher than what the company has even stated to be their target of 70%. So with everything that we just covered in today's video, what are my final thoughts on Brookfield Renewable Partners as a company to invest in as well as the future of the renewable sector? First off, I really like the industry that this company operates in as there's no denying that the renewable energy sector is gaining tremendous market share and demand from governments and corporations that are looking to lower their carbon footprint and help the world strive for sustainability over the coming decades. Brookfield's hydroelectric, wind, and solar farms are a world leader in the space with a solid customer base of over 600 public and private customers diversifying their revenue streams. Speaking of customers, Brookfield has 95% of their income being derived from long-term contractual obligations at a weighted average of 14 years in length. This means that the company can at a minimum maintain their income levels, allowing them to focus on growth and expansion over the coming years. I do believe that this is one of the most attractive factors of BEP and will contribute to significant appreciation of the stock price over the coming years, even though the company isn't consistently and considerably profitable. Keep in mind that with the way this company is currently structured and how they are allocating funds, they are looking to expand operations, which I can't blame them considering the inevitable increase in demand for renewable energy sources in the coming years. This has also led the company to focus on total long-term asset growth by acquiring more income-generating property and energy plans, allowing it to stay on track with 
with FFO growth in the 10 to 15% range year over year. For investors, the company has managed to provide steady double digit total returns for the past several years, including the dividend income, which is definitely great for any portfolio. With that said, I do find that the company is somewhat over leveraged on a short term basis with too much outbound cash flow being attributed to dividend payments, even though BEP has managed to maintain their dividend since inception. Now, I do realize that this is part of the company's overall strategy and based on current income levels should have no issue maintaining their growth of dividend payments. But personally, as an investor in a company, I'd rather see a company limit their share issuances, which by the way, ends up diluting share value instead of receiving a dividend that is at 93% of the company's funds from operations. All in all, Brookfield Renewable Partners is definitely an intriguing company that operates in an industry that I personally want to be invested in for the long term. Even considering their balance sheet and cash flow statement, BEP has tremendous growth ahead. I honestly have no doubt about this and will make investors a hefty return in both capital gains and dividend income. There's really no hiding the fact that the current price point has rebounded quite substantially since the March lows. However, if you're someone who's looking to invest in companies for the long term and their growth over the next 5, 10 or 20 years, which on this channel we definitely recommend, then BEP should definitely be a stock that's on your radar. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any other Q1 earnings analysis videos and stock market related content. And if you like the video, please make sure to smash the like button. It really helps my channel grow with the YouTube algorithm. On that note, thanks a lot for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next video in a couple days.